Hi, everyone. Good evening. I'm Martha Tedeschi. I'm the director of the Harvard Art Museums, and I'm honored to be here to introduce Pamela Joyner. Speaking of her collection, the collection she's built, of abstract art by African-American artists and artists of the global African diaspora, Pamela Joyner has said, it's no less ambitious than an effort to reframe art history. First, to include more broadly those who have been overlooked, and for those with visibility, to steward and contextualize those careers. Reflecting on Pam Joyner's ambitious and vital undertaking, the curators of the current exhibition Solidary and Solitary, the exhibition which is currently um, drawn from the Joyner Jafrida collection and is currently traveling throughout the United States, stated this, collectors of black art have long sought to preserve the facts about people and events that were being overlooked or discarded. The gesture is not small. Recognizing actors left out of dominant accounts does not simply repopulate these accounts, it changes the very form of history. This history also departs from a monolithic narrative of what it means to be black. During my remarks, a selection of images from the Joyner Jafrida collection will be playing here for your enjoyment. These are dazzling works of art, mostly abstract in form, by artists ranging from Norman Lewis and Sam Gilliam to Kevin Beasley, Shanique Smith, Lynette Yaramboche, among others. Pamela Joyner has moved boldly from a successful business career to become the most prominent collector and promoter of art in this country by, Amer by African-American modern masters, such as Sam Gilliam and Norman Lewis, who often made art with little recognition or acknowledgement, while their white counterparts of the very same moment, Ellsworth Kelly and Robert Rauschenberg, for instance, enjoyed tremendous critical and commercial success. She began collecting art around 20 years ago, and with the support of her husband, Fred Jafrida, embarked on a mission to alter the legacy of racism in the art world. She took this work very seriously, hiring an art historian to study and document the art, and she's amassed more than 300 works by some 100 different artists at this point, with works dating from the 1940s right up to yesterday. In addition to master works by earlier talents, such as Lewis and Gilliam, the collection also includes dynamic works in a wide variety of media and artistic approaches by current luminaries such as Carol Walker, Leonardo Drew, Lorna Simpson, Glenn Ligon, Melvin Edwards, and Mark Bradford, among so many others. As well, Pamela Joyner's passionate advocacy for the work of black artists reaches far beyond her own collection. To give only a few examples, she's established a fund at Tate in London, where she is a trustee to acquire African-American art. She's created an artist-in-residence program in her family's vineyard in Sonoma County. And she's funding a new archive on African-American artists at the Getty, where she was recently made a trustee. Evidence. Evidence of her great commitment to the display, documentation, and legacy of black artists resides in the encyclopedic volume, Four Generations, the Joyner Jafrida Collection of Abstract Art. I can recommend it. The current exhibition, Solidary and Solitary, is drawn from this astounding collection and has already been shown at a dozen museums in the United States. Pam is extremely generous with her collection, uh, both through this touring exhibition, but also by individual loans to museums across the country. She has also supported Soul of a Nation, the critically acclaimed and first comprehensive exhibition of the Black Masters that was commissioned by Tate and is currently on view and drawing capacity crowds um, at the Brooklyn Museum. 
a graduate of Dartmouth and Harvard, where she earned her MBA, and a supporter not only of the visual arts, she chaired the board of the San Francisco Ballet and served on the board of the New York City Ballet. In fact, it could be said that her early ballet lessons in her native Chicago, also my native Chicago, uh, started her on her path. In a wonderful pro profile um, of Joyner in the New York Times a couple of years ago, we learned that she would visit the Art Institute of Chicago to see George Surratt's A Sunday on the Island of Grand Chat after her ballet class. And in fact, it was at the Art Institute of Chicago where I was deputy director a few years ago that I first met Pam when she became a trustee of that institution as well. So from ballet class to the boardroom, very proud of you. It was here that she developed what she modestly calls cultural literacy. And it is her mission to bring to light art that has for so long been in the dark and to bring this type of literacy to those who have been too long shut out of it. For her extraordinary commitment to black art as a profound expression of history and experience, the Hutchins Center recognizes Pamela Joyner with the W.E.B. Du Bois Medal. Congratulations, Pamela. Very uh, deeply honored and humbled uh, by this award, and uh, I'd like to also congratulate all of my fellow awardees. It's um, a very memorable day for me, um, and I um, also would like to thank Harvard University, which set me on a path of having an interest in philanthropy. So um, I'm an unapologetic activist. And, and Florence, thank you for, for making it sound like that's okay. Um, and, um, you know, living in Northern California, that is sort of the hotbed of innovation, um, one can dare to be different. And so what we're setting out to do is change the full arc of the full canon of art history. Um, this endeavor requires uh, the input uh, and cooperation of so many individuals um, and institutions as well. But at the core of, of the endeavor is the artist. So I'll tell a little story about um, a room that is really an inspiration. I think about it often when I get up every morning to do the thing I do. Um, for a number of years in the Brooklyn Museum, there's been an installation of Kahindi Wiley's work. <laughs> And if you go there on a Saturday afternoon, well, first of all, let me just describe it. It's, it's almost a temple. The work is on the ceiling and all four walls. And when you go in that room on a Saturday afternoon, you see something you don't see in most cultural institutions around this country. You see teenagers of color and young kids of color and families of color kind of lounging around taking in this spectacle. Why? Because people want to see themselves on the walls. So Harvard Business School set me on a course where I was lucky. Um, I was able to do some things others weren't able to do, and so it's really been important to deploy those assets in a way that benefit others. Thank you very much. Yeah. 